Good morning to you. I'm sitting outside in my garden under my favorite tree, one and only tree in my garden. But I thought I would just do the bite-sized word from here for you. Um, today I want to encourage you. Maybe you've seen Facebook posts, mine included, that 2024 is a year for more. Which is why I was going to have a women's weekend called Mark for More. We're going to do that, but it'll only be in May. We we're going to start the year off Mark for More. But I really, I want to encourage you today that when God says it's a time for more, we're not looking at things, material things, more cars, more houses, more money. Those things are nice, and I believe that's part of what God means. He wants to, He wants you to be blessed abundantly so that you can be a blessing to others and you can enjoy the blessing but it's about more of him in our lives and so if we start this year off with any kind of poverty in our thinking we're going to miss out on what God wants to do when he says more of him because poverty in our thinking means there's short-sightedness lack of vision there's lack of hope there's no faith because you haven't heard anything from God that because hearing from God gives you faith to believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do excuse me sitting here in my cap just to keep my hair in place so there are symptoms of poverty in our thinking that I spoke about during 2023 I did teachings on the poverty mindset how it keeps us in a place of barrenness and, and there's no fruit there's no hope there's no joy and definitely we have no peace when we allow poverty to creep into our thinking. And there's something um, about poverty. Poverty is a way of thinking that is opposite to God's way of thinking. If we have any kind of poverty in our thinking, and it starts in the mind. It's, it start, poverty is not what you can see. You know, the lack that you see. Poverty starts in our thinking that we can't believe anything other than what our circumstances tell us is happening or is going to happen. And so when we live without hope, it's a mindset other than God's because he, he intends for us to live in hope. He intends for us to, to have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10. And so, which is why poverty and prophetic is our total extremes because to be prophetic means to hear from God to have poverty in your thinking means you haven't heard and it's your circumstances or your emotions or your feelings that are governing your faith or lack of faith so there's something called um, the uh, you know um, there's been some scientific research especially around the year 2019 and 2020 and it is called it's a term anticipatory grief and what that means is that people are already grieving over something that they haven't lost yet they're anticipating the worst so they're walking around with a sense of grief or mourning or hopelessness because they think because of the way the world is going they're going to lose everything. They're going to lose someone. They're going to lose their job. They're going to, you know, lose the ministry they have. And they're walking around without realizing it, that they're carrying around this anticipatory grief. Now, I'm not one of those people who likes to label things because scientists have done research and whatever. But I thought this was so interesting. That they are, and, and I'm not only talking about people out there who are not in the kingdom. I'm talking about believers who are carrying this let's call it a syndrome anticipating the worst that's going to happen now my antidote 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 is ephesians chapter 3 because if we're going to say that this is the year of more um i'm going to read you ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now to him to god who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all the wind that we ask or think not above all that the wind does the wind is blowing my pages around now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us 
to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now we read that scripture and we say, yes, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything we can ask or think. Just think about this today. If God answered all your prayers that you pray, what would your life look like? You would have peace. You would have joy in your life. You would have some vision and lots of faith and hope. And you would be telling everybody about it if you answered your prayer. Now, God is the God who is able to do above those things that we think about and that we ask him for. And then it says, according to the power that works in us. I want to tell you, there's nothing you can do to get the scripture to work. There's no formula. All you have to do is believe. When you believe that God hears your prayers and he's able to answer them, there's something that happens in your heart. It's called faith in your spirit man, in your inner man. It's called faith. And so, so a lot of people read that scripture and they say, oh, but there's no power working in me. I don't have the power. I don't have the faith. I don't, I don't have the good. So I'm not praying the right way. And so God can't do those things. Get that out of your thinking. There's already a power at work in you, and that's the power of the Spirit. And when we get into the scriptures and we read the scriptures and the scriptures come alive to us, and the, the answers that we're looking for, we find in the Word of God and faith comes, that power just gets triggered into action. And God is able to do over and above what you've asked Him or even thought about. Now, I've seen that in my life so many times that I ask God for things and then He says to me, but you're limiting me. Um, we put God in a box according to what our circumstances tell us and we ask him for a little bit because we don't want to be disappointed and so what I'm feeling in this year is when God said 2024 he said this to me is the year for more he meant more of him more of intimacy with him more encounters with him more dreams more revelation out of the word and so when I press into that secret place with him, because it is a pressing in, it's disciplining yourself to spend time in the secret place. This is my summer secret place um, where I give him time. I'm deliberate about creating a space for God to come and speak to me and to move in my life and to, to adjust things that need to be adjusted and to prepare me for what he's doing. And so I'm when, it, when I say the year of more, that's what... My, I have faith for that, more of him, that um, I'm going to experience the anointing. You know the, the ladies meeting that we're going to be doing on the 3rd of Feb in Pinelands, that you need to register for, by the way. It's all about being where his anointing is flowing, being in that place. And for me at the moment, it's being in this place, this waiting place with him. This is where his anointing is. You know, being anointed doesn't only mean doing a whole lot of things. It means experiencing him, hearing from him for yourself before you get out there and do the stuff. So, so that's where my faith is, more of him as I spend time in the secret place with him. And then I know that I am, when I do that, he's able to do over and above the things that I ask or think about. But if we just sit back and we say, oh, look at my circumstances, this is never going to change. And all we talk about are the problems in our lives. It's nice to talk about the problems and, and compare our notes with everybody else. But if we stay there in that place, God is not able to do because we're not activating the power of the spirit that's already in us, waiting to be, to be activated and released. And so my prayer for you. Is that you'll find that place i was saying the meeting on the third of feb is going to be all about being in that place where the anointing flows psalm 65 wherever your tracks that your the tracks of your chariot wheels go the, there's anointing flowing and dripping on that path that he has set out for you in this year ahead and beyond and so um find that place in him but don't look for things to do. Don't look for formulas and programs and, and get yourself involved in the busyness of life. Don't let busyness dictate your life or your life of faith. Let time in the secret place do that. And then from the secret place, he'll reveal things to you. Faith will arise. He'll tell you where to go, what to do, how to pray. All the answers are found in the secret place. So remember, it's Ephesians 3.20. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even ask or think or imagine or request in your wildest dreams 
So that's my encouragement for you today. Get poverty out of your thinking. God has got some great things in, and don't get stuck in that place of, now what do I do to get it? You believe. You pray and you believe. You receive by faith. So be encouraged with that today and I'll see you all soon again.